It's day three on the floor of PDAC 2025, and we have been enjoying ourselves immensely. Dan Blondell, Nano One Materials, one of my favorite companies in the Canadian market. How are you today? I'm great, thanks Tracy, it's good to be here. I guess we should start by congratulating you on your sale at the Candiac facility. Yeah, I, I, I should kind of walk people through the mechanics, but it's great for us. Look, it's a, it's a roughly a $16 million cash injection for us. Uh, we still hang on to the, all of the equipment, all of the know-how, um, everything that we need to take this business forward, except we, uh, we, just moved from, uh, uh, we just moved from owner to tenant. It's basically what the transaction is. We also sold $5 million worth of land um, uh, last year. So all told, that's a $22 million, uh, uh, $22 million of proceeds from, uh, from the land and the, the shell of the building that we've been able to generate. It's, of course, that's all non-dilutive. And it all goes back three years ago when we started the acquisition of that facility uh, and that business from... Uh, from Johnson Matthew. So in the end, the net uh, cost to us was 10 million. At the time, we took a uh, 10 million US dollar investment from Rio Tinto, so we were kind of net sum zero at that point. And that's, this has unlocked not only that $20 million in proceeds I just talked about, but it also unlocks uh, uh, $40 million in non-dilutive money from various government agencies. And all of that is to cover expenses uh, that are going into uh, into really converting that plant into a full demonstration facility. So really, you know, a $10 million investment three years ago is unlocking $60 million of value right now and really driving our whole uh, capacity expansion and, uh, and demonstration of our technology towards licensing and, and uh, eventually, you know, cash flow positive uh, revenues. And for a company that's consistently achieving milestones that you've communicated to your shareholders, what would you say is the biggest item on your agenda right now? What is your primary focus? Look, the focus right now, we, 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 have, we have dual efforts. We're out, uh, marketing, uh, we're out marketing our license package, but it's a pre-sales uh, sort of um, stage right now. So we're out testing the waters with a bunch of uh, uh, strategic interests. Ultimately, we think that will lead to, uh, to some small investments, small revenues coming in to drive the engineering plans for much larger facilities. But those are long sales cycles and, and they, they are what they are, uh, but we're actively out there with our partner Warley doing that. Meanwhile, we have the plant in Kandiak. Uh, we're bringing basically in the um, we're in the uh, qualification stage with a whole number of different customers, and we're looking to get those towards uh, uh, towards revenues, get the MOUs in place towards sales. Those initial sales are fundamental to our strategy, and I think all of our shareholders know that for sure. That's a, it's a big part of it. So starting to sell product will bring confidence. Confidence will lead to larger orders. Larger orders will lead to uh, license deals and and so on. So it's a, it builds organically off of those first sales. And they're going to come from uh, defense, aerospace industry initially, small offtakes, um, but they're very sophisticated manufacturers of cells for uh, for a variety of, of applications in those in those uh, areas. So that's a that's a that's a big part of our strategy. But it is a it's what catalyzes the whole thing to move forward: sales at Candiac and sales of licenses. And of course, I recommend strongly that you go to the Nano One Materials website and review the PowerPoint, which is fantastic, by the way, absolutely fantastic. And you have a number of relationships, of course, tariffs are in the news today. Yeah, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> tariffs are in the news, but because you have so many different types of relationships and partnerships, how will these tariffs potentially impact Nano One Materials? Well, first of all, we're pre-sales right now, so they don't—they have no immediate impact on us at all. Uh, of course, they are uh, going to put a damper on Mr. Market, uh, and I think everyone has to live with that. But, you know, specifically to Nano One, the, the plant in Candiac is relatively small compared to any plant in Asia, but it is, it's a demonstration facility. But our, our potential customers are globally diversified. So, we have a lot of flexibility in terms of where we end up directing those uh, uh, that product, and so that makes us pretty pretty flexible as far as the tariffs and, and any kind of trade restrictions that might exist. And then our licensing strategy um, is 
is totally transparent to, to tariffs. So really long term uh, has no impact on us. In fact, we may enable uh, a large manufacturer, let's say in the US, to, uh, to license our technology, be competitive with China, and, and be able to build something with actually no, no tariff impact at all to us. So we're largely tariff proof, I would say. Um, and our defense contractors uh, really don't have a lot of choice. We're the most advanced and economically viable alternative to China today in, L in the LFP space. So there is no real choice there, so it's a very inelastic demand curve right now for LFP, and we stand to benefit from that in the short term. And that's an amazing segue. The LFP sector, can you talk to us a little bit about where it's going here in the upcoming year or two? Well, if we look at really the, 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 the trends in China, it's, it's pushing from 70 to 80 percent market share in China, and, and we're, there's no, we're not any different in the rest of the world. We're going to need LFP uh, for all very similar applications, be that in energy storage, uh, you know, renewable storage for wind and solar, uh, for, uh, for, for data centers and, and, and AI type of uh, applications. There's going to be massive amount of batteries needed there. But also in the, uh, in the EV sector, LFP is going to be a a very important role in the entry level and mid-range uh, electric vehicles, which is going to the majority of the, uh, the automotive market. And then, of course, uh, industrial and, and, and defense uh, applications are going to play an important role right at the beginning. They're very small volume, but they play a, they're a catalyst to the market. So we fully expect that to happen in North America. Uh, I like to say that uh, you know, we, either, we, either, we either get in the car and start driving or we get run over by it. As a, as, a, as a nation, so we have to build out that supply chain. We can't do it by copying China, because the, the processes in China, if we bring them over here, we'll still rely on Chinese uh, iron sulfate as a supply, and ultimately have a very large environmental footprint that makes permitting very difficult. What we have is a, we combine the PCAM and CAM, as I've told your listeners very uh, many, many times. That allows us to go directly from iron metal into cathode. We, we, we basically, completely miss the sulfating part of the of the supply chain. That means no sulfating plant, no PCAM plant, no water treatment plant, and that's what drives the uh, the economics in our in our solution. It drives down the capital costs, the the, the OPEX, it uh, the energy intensity goes way down, the water intensity goes way down, and we have no externalities, we have no uh, wastewater, so we're much easier to permit than any of these other technologies. So that those things uh, cumulatively allow for uh, a tremendous this, um, market growth as LFP starts to take off. It's not fully here yet, but we're very well positioned to address that market with our uh, with our technology and with our licensing strategy because it spreads the uh, spreads the technology out amongst many different players with large balance sheets that can really build out some of that capacity. Well, we could not agree with you anymore with regards to the LFP market, and of course, you're capitalized now. Ongoing government support. Your shareholders must be thrilled. What should we be looking forward to in the next quarter or two? Look, the next quarter or two, it's, 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 it's executing on our, on our strategy in, in Kandiak, uh, getting uh, the, um, really getting all the qualification done, uh, starting to get to MOUs uh, uh, and uh, LOIs on, uh, on, on, on product, uh, making product for sale. And, and then growing that into you know, hard currency sales and, uh, and, and, you know, by, and by the end of the year and into the next year and then starting to really leverage the capacity expansion that we're investing in there right now. That's Dan Blondell from Nano One Materials. For more information, please go to their website. In fact, I urge you to do it. You're going to love it. And Dan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy. It's always a pleasure.